I have some awesome sponsors. I have some awesome friends that, that support my show and help me uh, get it on YouTube and help me edit and help me promote in different parts of the United States, Florida, Baltimore, Baltimore in the house, Georgia, Atlanta. That's one of my, well, we know Georgia, Atlanta is the same, but I just want to say that I love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Food is awesome. People are awesome. I can't wait to visit Atlanta this summer. And yes, I will visit it in the scorching hot heat, but for me, the hotter the better. I'm from the East Coast. I love the humidity. I know you guys are like, yeah, really? So anyway, we want to thank Colonial Engineers, where they will meet all of your projectorial needs. Colonial Engineers, thank you so much. And I also want to thank Robbie, Robin Johnson of CGJ Accounting. I always make a joke of that. It's, it's a great accounting firm. That's no joke. But CGJ, try saying that, CGJ Accounting. And let me tell you, this sister is sharp. She is really, really good. She's been in business for over 25 years. She has Long Beach and Southern California and, and LA on lockdown. Like she has a lot of high profile. Well, I don't want to get too much. It's her business, but she has a lot of great people who trust her with their numbers when it comes to accounting. And she's really, really good. And, and I'm very grateful um, to have her, um, as part of a team of people that help me be a better person. So, oh, where's my copy of A Good Case? I don't wanna to turn too far away from my screen, but my baby, and I'm so proud of it, here's A Good Case, the behind the scene look at the billion dollar home healthcare industry, narrated by two caregivers working in Los Angeles. So anybody that's seen the movie The Help, see? Great picture, isn't it? Great book. Great read. Great read. Anybody who read the movie, read the movie, saw the movie, read the book, The Help, knows that they told a great story about maids. And it's like, how do they do that? How do they make a story about maids not boring? Well, I did it with caregivers. I pulled the curtain back. It's about a young lady who goes into the caregiving system to help seniors. Um, and she's searching for a good case because a good case, a case is what an agency will send you and they call them cases when you have a senior client in need. The question is, is it a good one? And to lure you in to come work for a case that no one will ever take because it's just some circumstances that are just not right, but companies want the money. So they just snag it to make the money and they send in the caregiver to do the dirty work. And they'll say, it's a good case. And off you go, chasing the bait, and it may not always be a good case. So through a series of circumstances, you will discover in the book what a good case actually is. And you will laugh and you will cry, and it teaches you everything there is to know about senior care through a story. It's not a self-help. I don't do self-help. I figured if you're not helped by now. So I prefer a good novel, and it's mystery adventure. It's told very well. It starts through Santa Clarita, into Ventura County, through Santa Monica, into Beverly Hills. And it originates from Philadelphia, from the East Coast into the West Coast. It's a really good book. So pick up a copy, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's on all online booksellers. And there should be some on shelf in the Annapolis bookstore for my East Coast friends. And there is some at the Crown Bookstore in Woodland Hills. And at Mrs. Figg's, The Bookworm, in Camarillo, California. And it's at your public library in various places in California. So, and Iceberg. Can everyone see my card? Like, why is she showing this little card? Well, why the hell not? It's my show. See, Iceberg? Can you see it? Well, the picture. Everyone usually knows the picture of Iceberg. Might be a little too small. Well, the picture of Iceberg says it all. That's my... um. That's my uh, first novel, Iceberg, and, and it's about a young girl who dreams the future, and her younger brother falls into the frozen river along the Chesapeake Bay in southern Maryland, and she saves his life. It's a true story. It's based heavily on bullying. Very proud of my book. Very proud that I 
took the time to write it myself. And hey, some people do have ghost writers. Good for them. They're just big celebrities. They don't have time. But it's always fun to do your own work. And to do it and then tell people you wrote a book. Don't 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 put a couple pieces of paper together and run around town and tell people you wrote a book. I mean, you can if you want to, but why? Like, just be who you are. Stop trying to be so much. You know, uh, be grateful for who God made you to be at the pace that you're growing. If you want more, then do more. If you want to boast about doing more, then actually do it. So uh, what I mean by that is like people in Los Angeles want to be somebody. And people in New York think they're already somebody. You know, um, we all are somebody. If you love yourself, you, we are somebody. The thing about that is... Um, there's no need to lie. Like if you're talking to people that you got to pretend that you're something that you're not, then you're talking to the wrong people. Because if you need, if you don't think I'm enough to be in your company, then okay, I'm okay with that. Then bye. Or just get away from me. Or you, you know what I mean. But I find that most people that I, my circle anyway, and when I go out on the town, they're okay with me being who I am, whether I'm big or this and that, uh, or how much I've done. Because they've done just as much or more. That's the cool part about it. They're not intimidated by everything I've done. I, I do like eight things. They're not intimidated by that. So that's how I know I'm in the right circle. When people say, oh, you're a little, oh, you got yourself a little car, or you got yourself a little house. I see you got your little house. I see you got your little show. I see you got your little book. No, it's not, there's nothing little about a, buying a home. There's nothing little about having a radio show. And there's sure as hell ain't nothing Heck, I'm going to detox from swearing. There sure is heck nothing little about having a book. Sorry that you feel little about your life. Stop stop saying that you're little. You know, who, who says that? It's kind of like, it's almost like you're afraid to say, you know what? I did it. That a girl, that a boy. I did it. I did something great. Why do you have to downplay it? Well, don't downplay my life. Downplay your own. My life is good. Thank you, Jesus. I am very, very happy with my accomplishments. However, I do wait till I accomplish them. It's like saying, I'm going to buy a new car. Don't tell people you bought a new car. Just say, I'm going to buy a new car. I'm getting a new car. Don't, because you pitched in when you start lying, you're getting out of the reality and you really think you got a, a, a Rolls Royce parked in the garage. When you don't, you're trying to get one. Your goal is to have one or you're working toward. But if you tell the lie too much, you start to believe it. And, and that's very interesting in Los Angeles. Go out enough. Well, maybe some people, you know people like that in life. So anyway, okay, so.